Everyone feeling good this morning? Yeah. Woo, y'all are ready to go. You had your coffee. Ready to receive it. Before I get started, I'm going to tell you something really bold. Can I tell you all something really bold? This is the most important message of the year. We've done, what is it, 47 of them now this year. So I don't know if you do take notes or not. I don't know if you got a phone, sheet, whatever type of notebook you have. This is the most important message of the year. So someone say, I got a choice. You have a choice to tune in and, and receive it, or it can just skip on by. Here's what I'm also going also gonna to invite everyone to do. If you have questions about this sermon, you can talk to me immediately after service. I'm going to be right here. I'll wait. You don't have to be ashamed. You're not bad if you have questions. No, no, no. Come talk with me so that we can dialogue about this because this is the most important message of the year. I'm being serious. I'm being serious. This is the most important message of the year. Y'all ready to go for it? So we've been talking about authority, and we're in our series, I'm here, and it's different now. And now we're in part two. It's different now. It's still different. 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 And, uh, and, and so I just want to I just want to talk more about authority and tell you where your authority comes from. Because I, I look at a church... I'm, I'm going to spare no arrows today. Here we go. I look at a church that's not walking with authority. I'm not talking about here. I'm talking about the church. That's not walking with authority and leading the way that we're called to lead. We're not walking like we're capable. We're not walking like we got the Holy Spirit backing us up, leading the way. We're not walking like literally the, the same power that conquered the grave lives in me and you. We're not walking like it. Sorry, Josh. I seem like I'm yelling. I'm sorry. <laughs> so today, it's going to be different. Do not miss today. Of all the weeks, I know sometimes life hits. Might need to take a little nap because it's nice and warm in here and it's dark. Of all the weeks to zone out, this is not that week to nap. This is not that week to zone out. This is not that week to check out. No, 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 no. This is not the week. Amen, church? Good, we're going we're gonna to get a lesson. We're going to learn today. We're going to learn today. Those who are faithful walk with him. We talked, we opened up in part one about how Jesus, wherever he went, things were different. Yes, yes. But he's no longer here. But you, you're here. You're here. And those who believe in the way, the truth, and the life, those who are faithful and obedient to his commands, those who love him with their entire heart, the Holy Spirit is within you. You walk with him on the daily Wherever he is, there you, or wherever you are, there he is. And this is a question that I love that Paul poses to the church, and I would ask the same question of you all here today. Do you not know? Do you not know this? Do you not know who is inside of you? Do you not know that the Holy Spirit dwells within you? I've seen believers go for generations and generations, years and years and years, without acknowledging or stuffing down or completely ignoring the fact that God is within them. I'm hyped, church. I don't, hey, listen, I'm going to pull you along then. If you're not ready, I'm just going to pull you along. Do you not know? Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit whom you've received from God? You're not your own. You're bought with a price or you were bought at a price. So today I'm here to tell you that if you believe in the way, the truth, and the life, the Holy Spirit resides in you. How many generations of believers? How many people have stuffed it down? How many people have completely ignored it? How many, because it is scary to preach about. It's not always quantifiable. It's not always understood. God is a mystery. Amen. And so it's hard to preach about this stuff. How many churches just flat out don't preach about the Holy Spirit? He's within you. It's time to walk different. Wherever we go, He is there. If He's in you, that means when you open a door into your son's room late at night 
and you're going to go pray and lay hands on them, that means that the Holy Spirit's right then and there. Whenever you wake up, 7 in the morning, you walk into work at 8, you open up your cubicle and you're getting ready to go, the Holy Spirit's in that room right there at work. I'm telling you, wherever you go, He is there, church. That should get you fired up. Wherever you go, He is there. I'm here and it's different now. And I'm not saying I'm here and it's different now out of some arrogance because Nick Miller is not that great. I'm not that skilled. I don't have it all together. I don't have a billion and a half dollars. No, I'm not that great. The only reason I can say I'm here and it's different now is because the same power that conquered the grave lives in me. That's the only reason I can say this. It's him and me. I'm weak. He's strong. You'll receive power. Someone say power. Y'all remember last week we talked about what the difference between power and authority was. Power is the ability to perform the activity. To perform everything that God has commanded you to do. You'll receive power to do so. To go and bring the gospel to all nations. You'll receive the ability to do so. And authority is the right to exercise rule. A lot of believers don't operate in that. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. What I'm here to tell you today is that without him, that's going to be a really hard endeavor to do. You need to acknowledge that he's within you and you need to walk with him daily. That's where your power comes from, church. And so I put this tagline up on, on here, but uh, I, I want to communicate this with all of us. Again, the church, not just here. I'm not calling us out. I'm saying the church. We're not walking like we're capable We're not stepping into the corners of the earth like we're capable. We're not walking with that power or that authority that we've been given by heaven. We're not walking like we're capable or worthy of this different life. So this past series in part one, I talked maybe about the results. Let my people go, right? Fear has to flee. I talked about the results of an authoritative life. We're going to discover how to walk in authoritative life. Amen? We're not walking like we're capable or worthy of the different life. As a prisoner, Paul says in Ephesians 4, as a prisoner then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling that you've received. And I think that the greatest disappointment would be at the end of our walk to not live up to that. And I'm speaking this to myself. If I don't walk with the power and the authority that the Holy Spirit has given me, that God has entrusted to me, I don't know if I'll be able to live up to it. We need him to do it. And we need to trust him and we need to step into it. We need to actually do it. Enough sitting in the sidelines, enough just kind of hearing a message on a Sunday, going home and checking out, watching the Steelers game, although I believe they're going to win today. Hey, please, God, you know how to do it, okay? He knows how to do it. TJ Watts back, he knows how to do it, okay? But I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you that that we miss this we miss this get out of get out of the seat take it in live it out every day of your life amen you're given everything you need nick how do i do that there's no way you're talking about walking with power and authority changing every room that i walk into uh uh being a difference maker and and walking with power and uh, church you're given everything that you need to be able to change every room that you walk into You've been given everything you need to change every room that you walk into. Can I brag on someone this morning? Shannon, my friend. How long have you been coming to church now, Shannon? Year and a half? Two years now? She's different. She was praying, she was praying over me this morning. We have a prayer team. They, they lay hands and they pray over me. And she's like speaking scripture and truth. I've never seen you live like that. She's equipped to do it. Like it's been a change. You feel that too? It's different now. She's different. I'm going to tell you, if you don't know Shannon, get to know Shannon. She's different. She's different. You're giving everything you need to change every room you walk into. She, the crazy thing is, yeah, the pastor guy has the microphone, but she blesses me every morning that she prays over me. I'm being serious. It's different when she steps into the room. Anyways, let me go, let me go to Mark chapter 16. Jesus says, hey, I've been given all authority on heaven and on earth. 
hey, you're going to go and fulfill the mission. Go into all the world. Remember, last week we talked about authority coming from one who is higher than you. Authority being held in the hand of the author. Right? And so Jesus, the author of all creation, the one who holds all the authority, then says to you, Matt, he says, you go into all the world. Here's your authority. Here's your task. Go and do it. Just like the chief of police says, go handle this, officer. You've been given authority to represent us. Now go. 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 Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved, but whoever does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. This is what happens. You've been given this authority, church. Not just the pastor guy with the microphone. No, the believer is equipped with this. The believer is equipped with this. This is why it's crazy. You know what's what's incredible? Can I share something with you? Maturity as a Christian is not based on time. It's based on obedience. That's why, listen to me, that's why there's people who can be sitting in in this church one year saved as opposed to 30. And they're operating on a different level because they're walking in obedience daily. So it's not a time thing. You can pick this up right here, right now. God, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to be obedient to what you say. And that's what's going to be different. All right. So the bottom line for today is this. We got the warm-up. We got the warm-up. Okay, we're feeling good. We got the warm-up. We're feeling good. I have, for the next three weeks, a thought about being a king. Someone say king. For the next three weeks, we're going we're gonna to discuss what it is to be a king. Bottom line for today is this. If you're taking notes, write this down. There's authority in your bloodline. There is authority in your bloodline. (laughs) This week, please do not miss it. Because if you understand this statement right here, tomorrow is going to be different. If you understand this statement right here and you live it out and you believe it, tomorrow is going to be different. Your marriage is going to be different. The generations to follow you are going to be different. Your workplace is going to be different. Your friendships are going to be different. Everything is going to be different if you understand and believe this line right here, right now. Again, I'm going to tell you this is the most important week. That, I, that This is the most important message over this past year. I'm telling you, this is the most important message. Tune in right now. There's authority in your bloodline. Someone say, my bloodline. It's filled with authority. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So let's talk about a king. Can you think of a person who has authority without doing anything to earn it or deserve it? Who has authority without doing anything to earn it or deserve it? I was watching uh, The Last Kingdom. It's a show on Netflix. I love, like, fantasy sword fighting. I just love it. Okay? Okay. And there's this guy, his name is Uhtred. <laughs> I'm weird. Okay, whenever we watch, when Emmy and I watch this show, I just say, there's, there's this interesting thing, though. Let me give you some premise. So Uhtred is this warrior fighter. He's been toughened by the plight of this world. And, and he's been removed, though. He's been removed from Northumbria, where his father was king. And he was born to a king. And the show does this interesting thing. In the intro of the show, they say, my name is Uhtred, son of Uhtred. And Nick Miller in his weirdness goes, son of Uhtred, son of Uhtred, son of Uhtred. (laughs) You know what he's doing? And this is silly, it's a show. But he's acknowledging his lineage. He's pointing to the fact that he comes from a royal bloodline. I know it's a show, I know it's pretend, but do you get the premise here? Can you think of a person who has authority without doing anything to earn it or deserve it? Let's call him a prince. Can go and be this four-year-old little prince and say, I want what I want. And who has to obey? Everyone. He's done nothing to earn it. Nothing to deserve it. He has no wisdom. He has no experience in the world. He has no credentials yet. What's the only thing, the only reason why he has authority is because his dad's blood is in him. 
Church, are y'all catching this today? The, the, the person that I think of is someone who's a prince or a king. They have instant authority without doing anything to earn it or deserve it. That's why there's some bad kings. You, heard, you can study history and see some people who went crazy because dad was awesome, gave them everything they want, and they were just insane. Because people are given authority upon birth, the bloodline that goes within them. Church, we've lost sight of the fact that our bloodline is something to cherish. That our bloodline matters. We get proud. I'm an Italian. Hey, talk with my hands. We get really excited about where our lineage comes from. But I'm telling you, sometimes I feel like we forget. I feel like we forget how, how important it is to know where you come from and what blood runs through your veins, church. And here's the important thing about it. Not only does this prince... He's born with authority and doing nothing to earn it or deserve it. But let me also tell you one other thing. Outside circumstances may change in his life. He might be moving to other castles. He might be around different leaders. There might be different people teaching him. There might be different people in the king's service. Everything might change. He might be older. He might be betrothed to a loved one. He might be all of X, Y, and Z circumstances. But nothing can alter the blood that is within him. So outside things can change. So first of all, a prince is born. He is born with total and complete authority. Everyone has to respect him except the king himself, the one who's in a higher position. And then outside circumstances may happen. He might be a jerk. He might be smart. He might be wise. He might be strong. Whatever outside circumstances happen, nothing can change what goes through his veins. Hey, that rhyme. Ooh. about your children. Outside circumstances may change. One day Warren is going to meet a beautiful woman and get married and leave my house. My dude. Kiki's going to stay here forever. She's all right. She's with me. He's still a miller. Wherever he walks, he's still a miller. My blood's in his veins. He's still a miller no matter what. No matter what circumstances go on, he's still a miller. He's my son. He's my lineage. Nothing can alter your lineage. Nothing can change the blood that's in your veins, church. Y'all get why this is important. There's authority in your bloodline. It's just there. Nothing can take it away. And so my question for all of us to consider here today is this. Are you aware of the lineage that is within you? Are you aware of the lineage that's within you? If you're a believer of the way, the truth, and the life, I'm here to tell you today that something, something powerful has happened and we don't know it. Today I'm here to tell you this. Today you either take it, or believe, take it and believe it or not. I, I don't have a, here's Nick Miller's guide to authority today. I don't have that today. I'm here to tell you that straight facts today, you either believe this word or you do not. And so I want to show you what lineage you come from. I want to show you where you come from. Yes, we all are born in, in, in different families and we all have different upbringings and all have different places in life, right? I get it. But let me tell you something, that when you believe in the way, the truth, and the life, something changes in your lineage. Did you know that, church? I want to show you, though. I'm going to show you the beginning. Do you know that Jesus lived up to his bloodline lineage? You ever think about that? Jesus had a lineage, too. Jesus was born into this world. How crazy is it that God, perfect God, said he had enough compassion on his creation to go and send his one and only son to be the sacrifice for our sins so that we may have life and more life. Someone say amen. He lived up to his lineage though. Let me show you. Let me show you. There's this thing at the end of the book. Someone say revelation. Hey. Oh, the spooky revelation. No, it's the best. It's a book that will bless your life. Read it, read it, read it, read it. Revelation 19 says it like this. Hey, this is one of the times that you get to see the actual title. Someone say title. You get to see Jesus Christ's title. Doctor, pastor, 
Mr. President. This is his title right here, King, right? On his robe, he's in heaven at this time. On his robe and on his thigh, he has a name written, read it with me, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. That's his title. Now we might read that. And you might be sitting here saying, well, yeah, that's really cool. He did incredible things on this earth. You might be sitting here and saying, wow, that's really really poetic and really nice. And how beautiful of a picture that really is. Today, I'm here to tell you that Jesus, his bloodline is proof of this title. He didn't just magically get this title. This title was in his blood. Church, this title was in his actual lineage. This is how powerful lineage really is. He didn't just magically get this title. He didn't just live a cool, awesome life and everyone calls him Lord now. No, this is in his blood, in his DNA. He is king of king, king of kings, and lord of lords. His bloodline of proof is proof of where his authority comes from. So there's these long segments. Someone say, oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. There's these long segments that readers of the word always skip through. Hey, let's speak the truth, church. No lying in church. If you read your Bible and you see a bunch of weird names, you go, you read the first one, Abraham, Isaac, and skip to the last one. Come on, I'm not the only one. Don't make me feel bad. Thank you. When I see a list this long of names, man, I ain't got no time for that. Just get to the point. There's these long segments. You and I, we always skip through them. The boring genealogies. I'm here to tell you today that these genealogies truly matter. I'm I'm not going to do it today, but if you actually look up what each name means, do you know that there's a message in the genealogies? that the names actually correlate. God is so perfectly correlating a message to his creation. Look it up, it's, it's unbelievable. This is not just an accident. And so if you got your book, go ahead to Mark chapter one. I'm sorry, Matthew chapter one, come on Nick. Preach, man, you're a preacher, get it right. Matthew, you can read both. (laughs) Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, Matthew chapter 1, this is verse 1. The book opens up, Matthew also writes from a perspective of a a more Jewish background, okay? And so he, he starts out with his genealogy. This is a record of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David and Abraham. I love that he makes it very plain and simple. Let me show you why I'm going over these next millions of names. Let me show you what you and I do. We read, Abraham was the father of Isaac. Yeah, I can read that word. Isaac was the father of Jacob. Jacob, the father of Judah. Oh, we get to Perez and Zerah and just, just keep going. Just keep going. No, keep going. Yep, yep, yep. Has Hezron, Ram, what a name. Okay, th- this is literally what goes through my head. Ram, what a name. Keep going. Nishan, Salmon, <laughs> Solomon. I don't know. Keep going. I love it. Oh, then we see this. Jesse, the father of, someone say, no, no, not David. Oh, oh. hmm, don't miss that word. King David, King David. David was the father of Solomon, whose mother had been Uriah's wife. It keeps going. Go ahead. Just, you know, do the, do the thing. Do the thing. Solomon, the father. Yep, yep, yep. Jotham. Yep, yep, yep. We can all read that later. Manasseh. Yep. But we never get to it. Yep. Yep. Okay. Wait, wait. Yep. Zadok. Akim. Okay. Keep going. Keep, ah, wait. Right there. Keep going up one more. I'm sorry. Back one. Back one. Back one. Yep. Mathen, the father of Jacob. And then we end it right here. Go ahead. The next screen. Go ahead. And Jacob, the father of Joseph, the husband of Mary. And Mary was the mother of Jesus, who is called the Messiah, the Savior of the world. So you and I, we read this and we skip through it. We read all of these names. Three quarters of them we can't pronounce except for Ram. And we get through it. And then we go on and keep pressing on through the story. I'm here to tell you today that if you look back at this, Jesus has a legitimate claim to kingship. Wait, 
He's, what's his title in heaven, Revelation 19? That's not just something poetic, church. He had a legitimate claim to kingship. He is of the lineage of David. The thing that's really crazy, the thing that's really crazy is that they say that Matthew's genealogy follows the kingship lineage. And that Luke's genealogy follows the Levitical lineage. In other words, the priest lineage. Has anyone ever heard of 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9? What's it say? You are a chosen people and a royal priesthood. It's in his veins. It's in his blood. This kingship is in his blood. Uhtred, son of Uhtred, son of Uhtred. So I'm here to tell you today that Jesus was the son of David who was the king. He has kingship in his literal blood. So it's not some fake title. It's in his veins. He was destined to do it. Guys, we need to understand how precious our lineage really is, how incredible this really is. And I have a point getting to it at the end. But he is quite literally, someone say it with me, the king of kings. In his blood, king. King Jesus. Mm. Not just some philanthropic guy. It's not some cool idea guy. Not some awesome dude with powers. No, he is king, church. He is king. He is king. He is king. He's king. All right, let's see how Jesus is Lord of Lords, all right? So we hear of this woman. Her name is Mary, and she has this uh, an immaculate conception, this this beautiful, miraculous situation where the Holy Spirit, Jesus, is formed within her. At this point, she was a virgin. She was pledged to be married to Joseph, but she was a virgin. And let's see how Jesus is Lord of Lords. Let's track this lineage here. Because people are born from two sources, mom and a dad. Let's track his lineage here. Go ahead. This is in Matthew chapter 1, 20 through 21. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. So Joseph hears that, that Mary is pregnant. And he's like, whoa, I was pledged to be married with her. This is like ultimate like TMZ situation. There's a bunch of drama here. How did you get pregnant? Okay, all that type of stuff. And so there's a bunch of drama, and an angel shows up to Joseph. Whoa, 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 settle down, dude. This is what happened. This is God's plan. Something miraculous is about to go down. The Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, King David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you're to give him the name Jesus because names matter, and he will save his people from their sins. So Joseph isn't technically the father. God is the father here. He had a miraculous heavenly bloodline. We see right here that Jesus had a miraculous, put this up here please, had a miraculous heavenly bloodline from the work of the Holy Spirit. Can I, can I share something with you that I, I've learned in my studies? So uh, pregnancy is a beautiful thing. It's an incredible, I cannot believe When you look at a child, you instantly know that only God could create this. This is incredible. And so the beautiful thing that happens is there's an ovum, and correct me if I'm wrong, babe, right? Because I'm just a pastor. I do my job, okay? And so there's an ovum, and what happens is then it is fertilized, and the ovum protects, it protects the formation of this little one. But nutrients are provided through the mom. But you know the one thing that never touches a child? The blood of the mom never mixes with the blood of the child. And so when the placenta is formed and everything is protected, the child can receive nutrients. Jesus received nutrients, but his royal blood was never tarnished by mankind. God created the whole plan from the very beginning so that he would quite literally have untarnished royal heavenly blood flowing through his veins. And this is just an accident. Bro, he had a miraculous heavenly bloodline from the work of the Holy Spirit. I don't know how it all happened. That's a mystery we'll never know. But Mary 
gave nutrients, but her blood never mixed with Jesus Christ. And so that's why we can say this statement right here. Jesus was fully man and fully God. It's true. It's not even just true from like a a theology perspective or what you believe about the word of God. It's quite literally true from a genetics example. It's quite literally true from a scientific example that this man is fully God and fully man. Church, are y'all tracking today? Please, please let me know. I know we're learning a lot. I know we're going through a lot of things. Please, please. Please, please, please stick with it. Jesus is fully man and fully God, literally by his lineage, by the blood that is within him. It is undeniable from a scientific perspective that he is fully man and fully God. Someone say amen in the place. That's crazy. No, put that line back up there because I didn't finish the second part. His authority to be our Savior was in his literal blood. He was the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So when he goes around and he starts casting out demons and start healing the sick, that is the King going around casting out demons and healing sick. And that is the Lord going around and casting out demons and healing the sick. That is in his literal bloodline. He's not just some random guy, not just some... cool dude with a a cool idea no he is the king of kings and the lord of lords that's what he's doing don't skip those genealogies how beautiful is it that literally his bloodline was king of king and lord of lords nick that's really cool facts that's really awesome i like that idea but what does that mean for you and for me How does this lineage, how does his lineage, this beautiful King of Kings lineage and this Lord of Lords lineage, how does Christ's lineage impact us today? What does that mean for you and for me? Hmm, That's a great question. Can I tell you that this is probably the hardest week of preparation I've ever done this year? Mm -mm -mm. So how does his lineage impact you and me today please take notes I wanted to share this this is in Galatians chapter 3 put this up here please we're going to start with this base this foundation and we're going to go through how each step works okay so in Christ Jesus in him in him you are all what children of God through faith someone say faith through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have been clothed or have clothed yourself with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor male or female, for you're all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Jesus, there's a lineage right here. You are Abraham's seed. Did you read Matthew chapter 1? Who was in that lineage? Abraham. Name the second significant person. King David. So if you're in Jesus through faith in Christ, what happens is then you are of this lineage that was mentioned in Matthew chapter 1. You're of this lineage, which means that your lineage at one point was a king of Israel. Do you know that king is in your blood? Do you know that king is a part of your lineage? Church, are y'all catching this? You're of Abraham's seed. It follows that same course. You're a king. You're a queen. And what are queens and kings born with? Authority. What are kings and queens born with? Authority. It's in your bloodline, church. Your bloodline contains authority. Through faith in Jesus Christ, you are of Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. How could you be heirs if you weren't a part of the bloodline? My son receives my inheritance when I'm gone because he's my bloodline. Landon, I'm sorry you don't receive my inheritance, bro. You're not my bloodline. You're my brother, though. But of my lineage... You receive an inheritance. So you receive an inheritance because you are now a part of this lineage, church. You're of Abraham's seed. So when they say King David, you can say, yeah, that's my ancestor too. You're my ancestor. That's my ancestor too. Church, there is royalty in you. 
There is royalty in you. You are a king. You are a queen. Through lineage, there is actual royalty in you. And I don't care if you're the smartest person in the world. I don't care if you got a billion dollars. No matter what type of outside circumstances happen, there's royalty in you. Nothing can change the internal authority that flows through your veins, church. Nothing can change that. Nothing can change that. Nick, that sounds really cool. That's awesome. But how? How does this, how does this happen? How does this all go down? Because this sounds really cool. It's really poetic. It makes sense. It actually makes logical sense. But, like, how, how do we get here? This, there's this really cool thing in John chapter 3. How do we become children of God? There's this really interesting phrase in John chapter 3. You've heard it over and over if you've been in church long enough. You've heard this phrase being born again. Someone say born again. again. Oh, okay. We're going to jump into it. Church, we're going to school. Take notes. We're going through a lesson. Amen, church? We're getting a lesson. We're getting a lesson. Very truly, I tell you. No, this is Jesus speaking. No one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born again. So then Nicodemus. He was the chief priest at that time, a man devoted to the word of God, a man devoted to the law, a man who was studied and researched in everything that that has to do with religion. He says, how can you be born again? Very, very, very great question. He goes on to say like this, how can one be born from the mother's womb, womb again? How can one be born from the mother's womb again? Get your books out. Go to John chapter 3. Go to John chapter 3. I'm going to ask you to do something bold. I've asked you to do this once before with the wheats and the tares. And I'm here to tell you again that we're going to give some insight into the literal word of God. If you got your books out, John chapter 3, the word for born again, it does not quite literally mean to be born from the womb again. The word is better said like this, born from above. When you, study, when you study the word, when you study it in its original language, it is not necessarily born again. The word there is born above. So no, you don't have to go through the womb. That would be a traumatic experience. Weird. I ain't doing it again. Did it once. So how is one born again? No, no, no. The better way of stating that is how is one born above? That's what we're talking about here. That's how we can become children of God. Because just being brought into it or just feeling cool about it doesn't make sense. If we're to be a part of this lineage, then we have to be born into it. Please write that note down. If you're to be a part of this lineage, you have to be born into it. Mm. I hope you all are catching it today. So you're born above. And it's through faith in Christ. Uh, I I wanted to, we always go over these verses. How does faith in Christ work? Nick, do I have to be perfect? Do I have to have it all together? Do I have to have a million dollars? Do I need to attend church like a million times over and over? I think you should get to church, but, you know, no. That's not the requirement. Look at Romans chapter 10. It says it like this. How do you have faith in Christ? How do you become a part of this lineage? How do you become a part of this bloodline? How do you become a child of God? It's right here, church. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is, he's quite literally Lord, is he not? Bloodline. This is perfect. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. For it's with your heart that you believe and are justified and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. If you believe, if you believe, if you believe, I think belief comes down to two things and I've gone through this before. It becomes, it comes from knowledge and experience. You can know that gravity is real but if you've never felt it, how could you believe in it? And you can understand and feel that the world pulls you back down but if you don't know what's happening how could you believe in gravity and so we need to know and we need to experience that's why we love to our our vision here is to experience Christ's heart and to share his heart with others to know and experience belief and then you are saved 
I love this. In Acts chapter 2, this amazing day of Pentecost happens and people are, are, are speaking in tongues and everyone's hearing, their, everyone's hearing their language, their native language. How is this all happening? And Peter starts presenting and preaching the word of God and he starts teaching people about what it is to be saved. Look at this. Go ahead. It goes on. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you've crucified both Lord and literally in his blood, and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Isn't that interesting that they call him brothers? Peter replied, this is how you do it, church. Repent. Someone say repent. That is to turn completely around. Repent. Be baptized. Every one of you. Just get in the water. If you haven't been baptized, come talk with me. We'll set up a date. We got a nice little hot tub. It'll be nice and warm for you. Just get in the water. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off and for all, for all whom the Lord our God will call. Repent, be baptized, and you'll be saved. Confess with mouth, believe in your heart. Go get in the water. Let's do it. When you believe in your heart. That's when you're a child of God. Amen? And so, then what happens when we believe? What happens when you and I finally say, okay, Jesus, he is my Lord and Savior. I give him my life. I turn away. I repent. I turn away from my past. I walk into everything that I have with him. I believe that he came, died, and rose again to set me free. Now I give him my whole life. What happens when you believe in him? Well, Holy Spirit, let's jump into this. I love, I love that 2 Corinthians says it this way. Paul understands about bloodline and lineage. Therefore, someone say therefore. If anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old you, that old lineage is gone. The new you is here. Right here, right now. You're now children of God. You're now a part of the kingdom of God. If you are in Christ, the new creation is here. You're a part of a new way, church. Come on now. And so it is different. It is different. Hey, come on now. Who said that? Thank you. It is different. Therefore, if anyone is Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. You're not the same anymore. There's a different lineage for you and for me. I love someone said the Holy Spirit, but let me tell you the, the first thing that happens upon the new creation life. The first thing is this. He secures our eternal place. We talk about heaven all the time. We talk about heaven all the time. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. But you know what's really cool? Upon this message, I was really praying and considering it. Do you know that we will be with our family in heaven? Let me give clarity to that. To those who are children of God, like I'm a child of God. That's why, that's why you'll see all throughout the word, and I love Jason. Has anyone ever had a conversation with Jason Majaka? How's it going, sister? Oh, hey, brother. Brother, how's it going? Sister, it's good to see you. He's addressing his family. I love Jason. So you join your literal family in heaven. You're now children of God. One day I get to be with my brothers and sisters in heaven. It's a family from one lineage, all with a great inheritance yet to come. And you would not be a part of that inheritance unless you were not a, or unless you're a child of God. Born from above. Your lineage is different. Now you have a different inheritance. Look at this. You're no longer foreigners or strangers, but fellow citizens with God people, God's people, and also a member of what? His household. You're part of his house. You're his child. Part of his lineage. Come on. But our citizenship is in heaven. We eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so they will be like his glorious body. We're going to be in heaven with our brothers and sisters. Our eternal place is secure. That's the greatest inheritance that you and I have when we believe in the way, the truth, and the life. We have a new home. We have a new home. You and I have a new home. Glorious inheritance. Children of God. We'll be seeing our brothers and sisters in heaven. John, you're with me for eternity, bro. <laughs> Damn, I'm with you forever. Come on now. 
Mm. So the first thing is our, our, our heavenly place, our house, our inheritance is secured forever. It's crazy. The second thing that happens is he brings into our life a deposit of what is yet to come. A deposit guaranteeing what is yet to come. Y'all know it. We talk about it week in and week out. Upon belief in Jesus, you receive the Holy Spirit. Someone say Holy Spirit. Now why is that, Nick, why, first of all, why did y'all say that like that was a bummer? Y'all receive the Holy Spirit. Someone say Holy Spirit. Thank you. That's different. Get all like, Ugh, I mean, what the, what are y'all doing? He brings a deposit of what is yet to come. And so we, we've read over the past few weeks that, yes, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit gives us power and authority. And that's amazing. And that is very true. But quite literally, I'm going to show you that the Holy Spirit changes who we belong to internally. The Holy Spirit changes who we belong to internally. And you, go ahead, this is in Ephesians 1. You were also included in Christ when you heard the message of truth. Wait, wait, wait. You have to know. Remember to believe. You have to know the truth. You have to know the truth. You have to know who Jesus really is. If I told you that Jesus was an alien, you don't know the truth. Jesus was the Son of God, the Son of Man, the Savior of the world. The one who lived a perfect life and died for the propitiation of our sins. That's a good word. Included in, in Christ, when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed, you were marked in him with a seal. The promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit, I say this all the time, I want to give you the scripture reference, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemptions of those who are God's possession, to the praise of his glory. In other words, when he sees the mark on your heart that is different from every other heart in the world, he knows that you're his son or his daughter. So when God looks, when he returns and he says, hey, where are my children at? You will have a different mark on your heart. You will have a different mark on your heart. I don't want to jump ahead. Let me say it like this. The deposit, I want to, sh I want to share this with you. The deposit replaces a heart of stone with a heart of flesh. It was prophesied in, in Ezekiel that he's going to give you a new heart. What is the heart responsible for? Good, y'all went through biology class, anatomy, yay, y'all did it. Good job, good job, good job. The heart pumps blood throughout the entire body. So if you got a new heart, oh my gosh, it's different now. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. No wonder you're not walking in authority because you're not willing to acknowledge that you have a new heart from the Holy Spirit. And if you're in denial of him, of course it's hard to walk in the authority. Of course it's hard to say fear has to flee. Let my people go. Of course you won't see Mark 16 come to life. He gives us a new heart. A new lineage. This is powerful, church. So there was at one point in the Old Testament. Someone say Old Testament. The way that God's people were different, I know this is weird, but the way that God's people were different from everyone else in the world is that there was a circumcision. And so they were different. They were different from the rest of the world, literally based on this circumcision. And so what God says is that one day when Jesus comes, there will be a circumcision or a mark on your heart that will differentiate you from the rest of the world. Church, please stay awake. Please follow me. Please follow me. And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. Circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring. Sounds like lineage to me, doesn't it? So that you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul that you may live. Church, he's cutting out that old heart of stone and giving you a new way, a new literal creation. Are y'all pumped up today? So you're a new creation. You're a part of a different family. And you have literal, a different heart inside of you. And no one can change that. No outside circumstance can change that. You can be poor or rich. You can be jobless or job full. You can have a bunch of friends or not. Billion dollars or not. 
Nothing changes the bloodline that's within you. You're of Abraham's seed. You are a king. No matter how you feel today, you're a king and a queen. You have a royal bloodline. That's why we're talking about authority. I'm here to tell you today, you ain't got to do nothing to earn it or deserve it. Just be a part of his lineage and you are king. And everything that you command to bow has to bow. Just as a miller is in my child's bloodline, royalty is in yours now. Royalty is in your bloodline now. Today, I don't have an application for you. I don't have a step on, on how this is going to help your life. I'm here to tell you today that you either just simply believe this or not. You believe it or not. You can acknowledge who you are on the inside. The thing about Uhtred, son of Uhtred, is he never stops believing that he is king of the land. He doesn't stop believing it. No matter where he ends up, whether he's in Paganville or with the Christians, it doesn't matter where he's at. He's Uhtred, son of Uhtred. And you, you're Emily, daughter of the king. No matter what type of crappy day you had yesterday, Mark, son of the king, nothing can impact it. No matter where you find yourself, I'm the son. I am the daughter. Don't stop. Nothing can shake that. You are a chosen people. I'll go right back to it. Again, we talked about how Matthew's lineage, the genealogy follows the king. And then the Levitical lineage is in Luke's. Look at this. You are a chosen people. Hey, put this up here with me. You're a chosen people. A royal priesthood. That is not by some poetic circumstance. That is literally, you're of that seed. It's in you. A royal priesthood, one who holds authority, authority yet serves others. That's you in your literal bloodline. A holy nation, God's special possession that you may declare. How are you as a possession? You're his child. Come on. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you're a people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Church, I'm here to tell you today, there is no application. I always love giving you something to go home with and to try and to work it out through your day-to-day -day life. There is no application here. You either believe this or you don't. You either understand this or you don't. You either let this identity control or... or, or um, uh, uh, Model who you are or you don't. You either live life like the king that you are or you don't. You either live life and believe and walk like the queen that you are, queen, or you don't. There's nothing that can take this away. It's in your blood. It's in your literal blood. You either believe this today or you don't. Here is one thing that I will give you away for today. Is Jesus lived up to his lineage. Now you do it too. King of kings, Lord of lords. <laughs> he lived up to it. He literally defeated the grave. Took total authority as king of kings and lord of lords. He lived up to it. What's in your lineage, church? Can I speak about my son? My son operates a lot like I do. He has a weird quirky laugh like I do. He's goofy like I am. He laughs at funny jokes like I do. He's lighthearted like I am. He's emotional like I am. He is. He loves my interests. My interests are his interests. He follows me around. He's my buddy. He's my friend. He's my child. He's my son. And so I'm here to tell you that as a daughter or a son of the king, you have to live up to the example that has been set for you. First Peter puts it like this. As obedient, he's addressing lineage now. Not poetic, not choice. As children, model what your father looks like. As children, live like your father. As children, live like the king. As children, represent and live out your lineage. As children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. Hey, you're no longer ignorant today. You heard this message. Someone say bomber. 
Now you're no longer ignorant. Before you could have operated in ignorance, now you have to understand today, you're a child of God. If you believe in the way, the truth, and the life, you are a child of God. That DNA flows in your veins right here, right now. You have total authority to serve. You have, you have Christ's literal lineage in you. You are of Abraham's seed. You're no longer ignorant. So don't walk in those old ways anymore. But rather, live as your father lived. Rather, live as the king lived. But, but just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. So we had a series a little bit ago about different words in the Bible. And we went over this word holy. Someone say holy. When you think of it, you might be thinking of like perfection and, and being awesome in everything and, 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 and perfect. And that, that is, there is an element of that that's, that's in the word holy. But holy could be better described as set apart. What's that line there? I'm hearing it's different now. In other words... Be set apart. Look different than the world around you. When you step into work, be different now. When you step in your house, it's different now. Be holy in all you do. Live up to the kingship that's in your literal veins. It's different now. Walk with authority. So today, today, the first of three things that, that goes into being a king, you have authority literally just by your bloodline. No one can take that from you. You have literal authority from heaven just through your lineage. You have an inheritance for you, for his children. Church, you either believe this or you do not. And so this week my challenge to you is to really pray, God, give me that affirmation. Show me. Let this sink deep into my heart so that I may believe that I truly am a king or a queen. So that I may know that I truly have authority and nothing can take it away. Because that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to, he wants to rob you. He wants to convince you that you're not a child. That you aren't who, you, who he says you are. He wants to tell you about, hey, anyone ever notice that the enemy loves to bring up the past? Why does he bring up the past? Because he wants to show you how much of a failure you were before. And now that you belong in this lineage, he wants you to constantly look back there. Because he knows if you look at your lineage now, you're going to be different. You're going to be entirely different. So put the old stuff aside. Let's be different now. Not by anything we can do. Not by any outside circumstances. But by the literal lineage within you. Did y'all learn something today? Again, if you didn't take notes, now's your last chance. Your authority is in your bloodline. Your authority is in your bloodline. As a king or a queen... No matter the mistakes, no matter who you are personally, there's authority in you. Amen, church. That changed me this week. I need to believe it too. The enemy has had me, before, before coming to faith, he's had me in a trap for so long that I don't believe I'm worthy to be king. I don't believe I could ever do it. But thank goodness it's not determined on my circumstances. It's regardless of the past mistakes, I have authority. I'm different now. You have authority. Someone say, it's different now. Be the king and queen that you're called to be. Live up to it. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you that literally your word is perfect. And God did everything so beautifully, designed everything so beautifully. It is undeniable. It is undeniable how big and how true and how awesome you are. And so, God, I pray that today it would sink into the bottom of our hearts as believers in the way, the truth, and the life that our authority comes from nowhere else but just literally the lineage that is within us. God, we thank you. We thank you that we are new creations. The old is gone and the new is here. There is a new spirit, a new heart in me. Thank you, God. I pray that if I've been ignoring the Holy Spirit, if I've been shoving him down, I pray that I would bring him into, into wrap my arms around it, even though I might not understand it, that I would embrace the new heart in me and walk in the authority that you have given me. 
God, I thank you that nothing, no outside circumstance, whether we're on a mountaintop or in the valley, no matter what is going on, nothing can take away my lineage, my place in your, in your heart, my place as your child, my place in heaven. God, I thank you that nothing can shake my authority in you. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.